The consequence of that, Morrow told me, is that Barack Obama arrives in Texas with money and momentum. He said Hillary's in for a real battle here, one he still said she can win. And Major, what does Clinton's national headquarters say about that? Nothing. I have, uh, for the last couple of hours, tried to con contact Phil Singer, a deputy spokesman for Hillary Clinton, and Howard Wolfson, the main spokesman for Hillary Clinton. No reply at all, because there really is no way to spin out of this, Trace. That's a fact. What Gary Morrow said is absolutely true. Hillary Clinton would not have lost so decisively if she had a ground game in those 10 states. So there really is nothing the national campaign can say about it, except let's fight on in Texas and Ohio. Yeah. Major Garrett, live for us in Austin. Major, thanks very much. Let's bring in our political panel, Ann Trenalone. She's a senior fellow at the Independent Women's Voice political analyst John Avalon and Democratic strategist Jeff Hewitt. And Jeff, I guess to you first, I mean, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton said yesterday, Ohio, Texas, do or die for her. Well, President Clinton is absolutely right. Hillary needs to win these states. She needs to win them decisively. And if possible, a part of her strategy to actually win the nomination could be to resurrect the Florida and the Michigan delegates. Yeah, that's going to kill Pair the party. You're talking the about ripping the party apart there, Jeff. I mean, you know, you talk about, they both agreed, all the candidates agreed beforehand that they were not going to give, they were, they all said, fine, uh, Michigan and, and Florida, no delegates. We all agree on that. Now the Clinton campaign is going to back and say, wait a minute, maybe we need those delegates. John, uh, what do you make of that? I, I, I agree with you. It the party apart. What's most significant is what Gary Morrow just said. That is a significant condemnation by a Texas co-chair of the campaign. Sure. That means the campaign's running for the hills. They're real nervous and they have reason to be. And Anne, I mean, really, Hillary Clinton, even if she wins Ohio and wins Texas big, it's still proportional, right? And so she might pick up 15 delegates here and there. It's all going to come down to the superdelegates. And you're talking again about tearing the party apart when you go after those superdelegates, right? That's exactly right. I think if she pulls a parliamentary maneuver and tries to essentially steal the nomination with superdelegates, you're going to see reverberations, ramifications well through this election. The Clinton legacy will be tarnished forever. I think a lot of voters are going to go searching think... for another candidate. And, uh, and, and independent voters are going to make the real difference. And they're going to be turning away from Hillary Clinton yeah, like Matt if she Go does. ahead, Ann. I'm sorry. I had you going there first. That's all right. I don't think that the Clinton campaign is going to run into gigantic problems in Texas. They do have some big strongholds down in the valley, etc. But I think the Gary Morrow comments are really interesting. He knows something about winning elections in Texas, and he knows something about losing elections in Texas. So I think they should heed some of his warnings, look at how they're getting people out, and remember that in Texas, given the way the primaries are run, it is yeah. about voter turnout. Voter turnout. And you know, they're just going after Jeff, going after Obama, saying that Obama's a smooth talker with, with no sub I mean, that's their, that's their refrain over and over again. Is it enough? Well, we'll see soon. I think that the increased turnout will actually benefit Hillary in the rural parts of Texas among working class people. So I don't think this Texas primary is over yet, and we should not count her out. John? 10 seconds. Of course we shouldn't count her out. This, this primary still has got to happen. But independent voters are going to be a factor, and Obama's got the momentum, he's got the money, and Hillary's on the ropes. And you want to wrap up the left for us? Left side basically, of the debate, is. <laughs> basically, I think it's going to be a hard fight, and this is Hillary's last stand. Uh, the panel could sit tight for us. That'd be great. We're going to come back to you here in a minute. But I want to get back to the top story. One of the top stories of the day was so many. John McCain. John McCain, the article in the New York Times coming out saying that John McCain had an inappropriate relationship with a lobbyist and that mm, he might be a political hypocrite. We'll talk to our panel about that next. Well, it seems a lot of presidential campaigns are forced to address a scandal at one point or another, and now it's John McCain's turn. This morning, McCain came out swinging over a New York Times article suggesting he had an inappropriate relationship with a female lobbyist. Well, right. something like this is always uh, distracting and very disappointing, and I hope we can, by you know, doing what we're doing here, uh, put to rest the, the whole situation. How the incident will ultimately affect McCain's campaign remains to be seen. Back with us now, political analyst John Avalon, senior fellow at the Independent Women's Voice, Ann Trenalone. She's representing the right, and Democratic strategist Jeff Hewitt. And Jeff, I know you're about to tell us that this was journalism at its finest, so go ahead, you first. Do we lose? Do we lose Jeff? I saw Ann. Jeff, can you hear me? <laughs> I hear you now. What's yeah. your question? My question was, I know that you're about to tell us this was journalism at its finest, so go ahead. 
Well, I just think that, you know, the difference in the, the, the different campaigns, uh, you know, that's just... You think this article was fair, Jeff? Well, I do, but here's what I think. John McCain must take us for idiots if he thinks that we believe that he's never done a special favor for a lobbyist. Hello, he's a member well, of the that, U.S. that's Congress. off subject. That's not the point here. The, the point here is the article. The article calling him, saying he's a political hypocrite, that he did a favor for this woman and the, and the people who this woman works for time and again. Do you think the article was well-sourced and the article was fair and this is good journalism? I don't know how well-sourced the article was, but I think you the read main it. Did point... you read it? It was There were no sourcing. Well, that's my point. But what, I, what the main thing here is that John McCain is being sanctimonious about this to put out a blanket statement and say, I've never helped a lobbyist. Hello, he's a member of the U.S. Congress. He's obviously done special favors for lobbyists. He's flown on their jets. He sent letters to regulatory agency where his committee has oversight. I mean, John McCain must take the rest of us for idiots, quite frankly. And what do you think? Well, I, I think he's overstating some of that. Uh, he has reimbursed for those flights, et cetera. That's all in the article. But I think what people need to go After back to fact. is... Go ahead, Ann. After the fact, you can do that. It can still be legal if you're reimbursed for those kind of payments after the fact. A, a uh, smear article, Ann, I mean, the, 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 the stuff, the politics notwithstanding, the article, was the article fair in your estimation? I would recommend that everyone in the public and in the media uh, approach this article with a healthy and robust skepticism. Got, because got John Adler you're looking John, at... John, John, I'm going to get John's opinion here. We've got a few seconds left. John, yeah, go ahead. Th this is the New York Times trying to build up a likely Republican nominee and then take him down. It's shoddy journalism. It's a lousy article. It's unsourced. It dredges up lots of old stories that McC uh, McCain was exonerated from. And he's an honorable man. And this John, is not like this. John Avalon, Ann Trenalone, Jeff Hewitt, thank you all. The big board, let's take a look.